show up dressed as goth Santa and uh, <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Blam, blam. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, you know it. Whatever the hell else we come up with. And then that's, uh, that's still Jordan. Yep. hundred <laughs> percent guaranteed. Don't you dare say different. That is absolutely Jordan. Uh, that is not a, yeah, that's a, it's not our Zomtuber. Uh, also it's not, 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 not a body zombie avatar. <laughs> zombie avatar. And together with you, Shadow Realm Dynamic, who could very well be zombies for all we know, help in his form. Cocaine Voltron. So we've dis- we're working, we're fleshing out an idea for Netflix uh, in the pre-show about a fantasy world that is controlled by seven Santas. Mm-hmm. Now we S- have seven deadly Santas. We've got Goth Santa, and for whatever reason, there's Goth Zella. Yeah, Santa, Santa, <laughs> Goth Santa's ex roommate, and then we got emo Santa, okay. and then we got Santa Maria. <laughs> and I, I guess we're gonna like go ahead and tie and, in like the uh, zom zombie avatar. Post-apocalyptic sure. yeah. thing, and yeah, this, we, we, this we, we, is we, we got th- Carlos Santa Anna. Mm. <laughs> okay, and Satan because someone was uh, mildly no, no, dyslexic no, and misspelled. No, 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 Stan. We got Stan, Stan <laughs> from, from the, the Eminem song. Are, are there multiple like Cerberus puppers we got to deal with? No, there, there, there is yeah. there is a Cerberus reindeer. There's like a multi-headed reindeer that pulls but the sleigh all like and breathes chihuahuas fire. Chihuahuas and pugs and bulldogs, then they can't breathe all that well, so they're not really a threat. <laughs> they, they breathe venomous bees. Yeah, it's like the dogs with the killer bees in their mouth, so that when they bark, they shoot killer bees at you. <sighs> mm-hmm. Everyone always wanted a power glove that could shoot cancer. Anyway. So, it ladies and gentlemen, do for all we know. <laughs> bring back moral of the story. Did don't bring back the uh, power glove? There we go. Bring back the power Santa. Power Santa. What's 9, new? What's going on? I got Game Scope up and working on Nvidia, despite despite Pedro not taking this joke correctly when I say that Pedro claimed it was impossible for, over on Mount Team Red. <laughs> it was. It straight up was. <laughs> For a long time, but apparently it's been fixed now. <laughs> it's been working for a while. Pedro, uh, Jordan's been using it for quite some time, playing around with, uh, like, what, Cybertruck and other things like that. Yeah. Selectively. Uh, yep. It's still kind of a pain in the ass to use because you got to do the game scope, then you got to figure out the, the HW <laughs> commands. The codes. Yeah. It would, be, it would be nice if they, like, added some functionality into, like, Steam to, like, set that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like Lutris yeah. did. Good job, Strider, on that one. That that's actually very nice. <laughs> I want to solve a crossword puzzle. Uh, this, yeah, I had to decrypt that. And I thought I had it working, and it turns out that like what I was doing was like causing it to like double up the effort. But I was still getting. Desert. I was like, oh, if I flip these around, that does this. And what are we talking about? Well, I ran into a particular issue with the latest uh, Trackmania 2020, to where uh, it, this has been a bug. You know, it's Ubisoft, man. Come on, think about it. They're not going to fix call. Uh, been a problem since the original Trackmania. If you on at least on Linux. If you set it to full screen, it goes to full screen and it does a twenty one sixty p or whatever your max resolution is for your monitor. Way around that. Set it at ten eighty p and it's like cool story, bro. Twenty one sixty p. So you better be able to run the game, uh, whatever video card you have at twenty one sixty p. You're gonna have a bad time if you try to play it full screen. Game scope can get around that because you can say, hey, you know what? F you. I do what I want. You're going to be confined to this little window. This virtual desktop is, you know, 1080p. Oh, what are you going to do now? Oh, now I'm going to make the one. Oh, you don't have a control now. Oh, look at me. Look at me. I'm the desktop now. And um, it's pretty dope. And plus you can do upscaling and all the other fun things. So I've, I've been having a good time playing around with that. Um, speaking of track media, you can play with us on Tuesdays and Fridays. We had a good time on Friday. We played Cup of the Evening, which is like Cup of the Day for the bad people. The not so hot ones. Not like Lady of the Evening. Dude, um, I was excited, man, because I was like tier five. Somebody tried to explain how low tier was, and we're, we're already playing like the second class cup of the day, which is the cup of the evening. But I, I, I got third, third, third place loser in the fifth tier, a cup of the <laughs> evening. Yeah, that, that sounds like something yeah. out of an Indiana Jones movie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was number three uh, in Portugal for a season, and then I stopped playing, and I haven't been anywhere near the chart since then. <laughs> um, I don't even know like how it's broken. We, we were trying to determine exactly how the uh, Trackmania thing's broken down. Has it completely changed uh, the season? But Cup of the Day is something that they do every day, and it's always a... Uh, interesting challenging bs except for that day it was a nice map and then everyone just peaced out we're like we're not playing a nice map moral of the story come hang out with us on tuesdays and fridays and i'll probably do a uh is game scope available in the fedora repo uh it yeah. is but generally it's an older version i've i just build my own usually yeah like i, I was thinking about doing a video on because you know it's also available in debian and uh, debian testing strangely enough i'm like ha huh, and it's fairly recent like might be doing a video just about, you know, pulling it, building it and setting it up and play it around with it. So stay tuned for that. Jordan, let's talk about doors, man. Doors is future currency in our. OK, OK, OK. Here's another weird thing in our universe. Doors are currency. Can we make that canon right now since we're fleshing out the seven centers? Doorlers. Doors. Door, door, <laughs> doors. Yeah, door Physical doors that go on houses and other places that require doors yep. are the only accepted forms of currency in this universe can we agree on that yeah yeah, yeah. well I, but I, it doesn't really matter because they all come in through the chimneys anyways which i okay, think is the so... main point of contention right like <laughs> they're, 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 there's a war between like the humans and the santas and they're they're trying to keep the santas out they don't realize that they just need to stick the doors on the chimneys and then they'll defeat the santas but okay so if doors are the currency uh what do you like the little cat doors are those a detriment or an improvement on the value of the door that's no that, that, that's, that's like a that's like a 50 cent coin right yeah. like Okay, but what is the 50 cent coin? Is the whole door all of a sudden only worth half a door because it has the little... L l listen, we, we, we can talk about door economics later. <laughs> um... See, you know, you're trying to pay for some shit, Pedro's that motherfucker that's in front of you. Doing yeah, this shit, like, and you, you, yeah, you're like, yeah, yes. counting out nickels I'm the old from the person of that's nickels. <laughs> counting the yeah. shackles, yes. He, he's <laughs> pulling out his door book and getting his pin. He's like, all right, who would I need to make this out to? I'm like, yeah. oh no, do, why, do, why are do you the, waiting until right now? You knew you had to pay in doors when you got in the line. The, just do the big Lebowski thing, pay for the carton a half and half of the check. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, one bitter, Mateus? Um, Jordan, I'm, seriously though, do you get anything going on outside of like laundry wars? No, my, it's the end of my training mesocycle, so my body's all beat up. I have a week off of training and then going into peak, so lots of lifting heavy weights for one or two reps. All right. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can squat 600 pounds at sub 300 pound body weight. That'll go well. No poop. Or I'll die. <laughs> no poop and no, you know, <laughs> prolapse. I, listen, have, have, haven't, poop, <laughs> haven't pooped myself yet. Moral of the story, use a squat plug. Hmm. What about you, Pedro? Uh, no. You have a spot. You have a spot plug. <laughs> no, no, no. I do not. Um, in fact, uh, I I very much regress to like me from ten years ago. Except I have a bit more money now. <laughs> I suppose that, that that's a difference. But yeah, no. I, I mentioned this last week. APB Reloaded now works on Linux. There's still some launch codes that you need to put in, but um, the Battle Eye as has been updated in the game so that it will allow people using Proton to play it. So despite it not being a very good video game, objectively speaking, I know that, but I like it. I like what it does and I like to play it. So that's, that's all my is free this time this week. one of those week. things where if I pull up like how many hours Pedro has been, is just going to say all of the hours? Uh, it's yeah, probably it, going it, to say around 150 hours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, the, I already had 140, uh, of, from last 2011 week. no <laughs> from 2011 and i had many many others before the game was even on steam but um yeah uh, on steam i had like 140 so over the past week i've added another 10 hours ish oh. yeah how many more hours do we think we could add to the horse before it finally finally bows and gets off its high horse and pays with the doors. No, man, it's 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 been here for ten years and it ain't going anywhere. It's the steamer. Yep, ten years ago, this I think it was Tuesday actually. They announced Steam no, for it Linux. No, was on a fucking Thursday, bitch. I was it, it up. Was it a Thursday? All yeah, right, that's I why I wrote it in the notes. 
I don't know how to read, Ven. Okay. I thought you realized this after 10 years. <laughs> well, the, well, the joke was it was on a Tuesday. It's like, actually, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, actually, we should have Pedro come in with that part. A bit more. <laughs> well, I, I, I literally just guessed it the day because I didn't remember. But uh, yeah, uh, but uh, what I Valentine's do remember day. is what I do remember <laughs> is uh, sitting in my uh, in the research department at my college going, oh, my God, they just released a Steam binary for Linux. It's on, it was on Ubuntu only, but like within an hour, it was running on Arch and Fedora and all these other thing, things. And you could install World of Goo and, and, and Sirius Sam 3. Uh, and it was, it was crazy. You could actually buy and play games natively on Linux. Welcome, Remember, Linux users. Oh my God. You could get the Team Fortress 2 Tux thing that everyone installed right. shit on a VM to get. There, there, there was that. Um, yeah, so ten, 10 years later, and like, man, I, I, I remember we were all about the Linux native gaming stuff, and now ten yeah. years later, we're in, we're in fucking Proton Land, man. We sold out, man. Look, I, I bought in. Cool. I bought a Steam Deck. I bought the Proton, the yep. dedicated Proton machine. Pager's all right? part of the problem. <laughs> um, the February fourteenth. I mean, yeah, I had to. I had to pull up a calendar. I didn't know off the top of my head. I was hoping it was going to be on a Tuesday to make the joke. It turns out it was on a Thursday. We had our little brains blown fresh apart. I got this page pulled up from um, the Wayback Machine. On Archive.org. Just, just taking a look at it, and wow, wow, wow! It, it, it's crazy going back and looking at this from a decade ago because we're talking about stuff like Half Life, Serious Sam, Team Fortress Two. And, you know, a bunch of games that you already had from Humble. A, a bunch of games that came out in, like, 2009 that now we could play today. Or, yeah. One of the things that we were able to do was to take our Steam keys from all of our Humble games and just <laughs> randomly start plugging them into Steam, mm -hmm. which before, I had no reason to have Steam downloaded to play a Windows version of the game that I had native on Linux, and that was great. That was great. And this very show, we were 20-plus weeks and a Linux team cast before this announcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, sorry, yeah, we, we didn't... really saved the show. If you, yeah. <laughs> if, if you, if you, if you, if you're a time traveler and you're looking for that one point in time to erase us from existence, <laughs> show up dressed as Goth Santa and uh, <laughs> ho ho ho, blam blam, no, no kind witnesses. Of Right, are you Linux game cast? I was like, I'm sorry to report your Linux game cast is already dead. <laughs> Do -do -do. Yeah. The Linux game cast you're trying to reach has been murdered. Please make a note of it. Come with me if you want to let I know. Um, so it was a weird time. It was. We, we were desperate for content back then because it was like, hey, to this day, I mean, this is why we still make it a point to cover open source games, projects, and stuff like that. We have an entire segment dedicated to it, but we do have this first segment, which is the Steam segment dedicated to what valve has done and continues to keep doing like it has made linux gaming a thing like it or not that's reality you're free to accept or reject the reality that's on you but like hey you know what we can still be friends i really like the post though from the wayback machine because valve was bragging about having not linux games total games two thousand games available 10 years ago like that was that was a bold ass number for valve to put out I'm like look at that two thousand games get away from us peasants you can't touch us to which i was like can we go back to those times Valve? like because here's the thing out of those two thousand games like 1700 of them were great games because you curated your shit back then like it was an achievement to get your game on steam like, that was almost a guaranteed paycheck if you got your game on Steam back then. Uh, see, part of me very much goes with the whole, yes, free market, let just let everything that you can uh, effectively support, mm -hmm. let it up on the store, and just let people decide for themselves what they like and what they don't like. I like that. But, of course, game developers don't like that because that means a lot of games competing or vying for people's attention so well when yeah. it was small because here's something that steam's not fixed yet pedro but there's discoverability there's no promotion or anything like that so when yeah. you have this constant tsunami <laughs> of new stuff coming in each and every week that, that they've been trying they've in fact we will get to that um 
in the next story. <laughs> but it is, uh, it is. I guess people really wanted back when Steam only allowed certain games because that, yes, that meant quality games, uh, or at least good enough to get on Steam, and or, that would immediately you know, give like them had the right binaries for the platform. <laughs> yes, <laughs> although so when the Steam for Linux bucks. came out, there were a lot of. Uh, executable not found because people didn't know how to set up the deep well, I mean you know it's good to see something that hasn't changed right? no, uh, no no spoilers <laughs> spoilers man we we got an entire two segments of the show to get through before we get to that all right let's talk about a year in review steam 2022 a recap of tools features and data that's from the last year and you know I'm really glad like always looking at the latest art on the steam store and like used as just examples throughout somebody over at valve really likes um Domekeeper graphics, which I'm very happy about because I thought that game was really spectacularly fun. Outside of that, as you might have guessed, Steam's been very busy during 2022. That little thing uh, called a Steam Deck, might have heard about it. It showed up. Uh, we got some language support. It was vastly expanded. Steam Next, big fan of that. And of course, plenty of sales. And by that, I don't mean like retail sales i mean there's a sale for everything it's like it's the tuesday winter sale what about thursday <laughs> winter sale just wait no, that's coming yeah and the big winner for me was steam next fest i've talked about that even last week and before that we're getting demos back and that is an excellent thing and i'm just gonna be like yo uh, y'all, y'all just might want to class over uh, da, 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 I, da, da. <laughs> I really like the authenticator change because that qr code login makes it really convenient like they're the, the Steam login pro- process was fine. It was a little little, little frictitious, but now like, you can just scan a QR code. Uh, yeah. Here's and- the thing, though. <laughs> I like that, too, but I don't like the... Is this thing working? Is, did I tap the button to open the application? Yeah. The, it the, takes I a while, think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 t- it takes a second, but honestly, I'd rather have that over like, oh, shit, where's my fucking phone? I, got my, I need to have it anyways if I want to scan the QR code, but like mm. at least... I had that ahead of time. I, I thought to myself, oh, I need to log into Steam. Let me get my authenticator. Uh, the, the the two things I will say about the updated app outside of that is it is slow and it's clunky. Just like Big Picture. Hmm. Like the new Big Picture mode. <laughs> yeah. All right. Consistency. That, that, that's another thing that they released in 2022. Yes. But uh, no, I I read this and I'm like, oh, you get down to the part where it's helping game developers make better games. Yeah, that's a re- yearly reminder of what that 30% that you're cutting valve that's what seven that's paying for that's that's a lot but <laughs> yeah, the, the, effectively the, uh they're I, giving games well in theory they're giving games that only have local multiplayer um online multiplayer stop. with <laughs> okay we we, we, we we gotta we gotta stop saying that we get we really have to stop like pretending that steam remote play is even remotely resembling an actual multiplayer solution it is a, it is a fun little band-aid in a thought experiment but <laughs> It is, but I also think if we just wait it out, Steam will Valve forget it's a thing. Because I think whoever came up with that fucked around with it. And they're like, I'm <laughs> it's probably not, not doing it anymore. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. bored with this next. Well, so, so like the, 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 the core technology is fine. Like if you want to do like the land streaming, that shit works fine. Right? Like, but, you know, once you, once you start like, I want to play a multiplayer game with Pedro. Enjoy waiting for your yeah. Your enjoy like the full refresh. second delay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's the delay is so bad that your brain never gets the, used to it. So no, <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the one like, oh my God, revelation here is steam growth increased during the pandemic. People were what? trapped indoors and had to play more video games. No, so, to be fair, according to that same graph, uh, even after the lockdowns were lifted in most of the, uh, so-called Western world, mm-hmm. uh, it kept growing. Mm-hmm. So it, I'm sure it helped, but it wasn't just well, the Pedro, pandemic that Pedro drove. Is my that this is how crippling addictions work. You know, once like, it's introduced <laughs> into gaming, and like, oh, I gotta, I gotta keep playing these games, man. Oh, achievements unlocked. Yes. Like, but okay. For real, to be fair, most of the people who like that kind of Skinner box experience are playing MMOs, and no, most of Fortnite. them don't even have Dark Steam Souls. because the MMOs have standalone clients. They don't need Steam for that. Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> Dark Souls what, what, doesn't really fit that definition. <laughs> so what, 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 why, why don't, why don't we just like give it up and like let the community handle steam? That, that's a good idea, right? That that's well, uh, it works so well for uh, natural selection too, but we'll get to that. Uh, the, <laughs> this is team fortress too. Uh, there's, there was a blog post that released with a certain wording. 
Uh, namely, they called it an update-sized update, and now they're calling it a holiday-sized update. I don't know what the difference is, but the, um, well, the uh, Reddit community at large through their collective fits over the change of the wording. Hey, they changed but, the word, man. I don't know what upsets you, but I, I see a word change. I'm just, I don't know, doing myself for like an afternoon. I'm, yeah, no, there's a, <laughs> that, that's the kind of mentality I you mean, need to in order to be like active if it's on an Reddit. Adjective, <laughs> like a verb I can get over. But like a proper <laughs> noun, that will set me right the hell off, Pedro. No, we, we added yeah. like three more commas to this blog post and it completely changed this, the meaning of like several sentences. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so they released a blog post and saying, yes, there's going to be an update. It's going to bring new weapons, uh, new skins, new hats, and new game modes. Uh, it's an update. And I, they are looking for people who have uh, put their contributions up on the workshop. Or if they haven't yet, they should absolutely do it because they're going to be taking stuff from the community. It's Team Fortress 2. If you've ever contributed a hat or anything literally for the workshop, you know that that happens sometimes. Except that is now the core. I'm guess that I'm guessing that's what Valve meant when they said that the community was taking over. But yeah, uh, the the big story here was that Reddit collectively lost its shit because of the changing of the wording in the um in the article it's, it's the war on christmas man you can't get yeah. the holidays and replace them with updates or I, I don't know here's here's the thing i need to know though like when did we all just agree that holiday is considered a standard unit of measurement people because this is a holiday sized i'm like keep going like uh, <laughs> d- 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 depends on the holiday right like i don't think it's a yum kippur sized sale this is what i'm saying be- man um well, well, let's work on that but then again um this this post is edgy, uh, attempting to be edgy to a fault. Like I, I, I think maybe you're trying to go for the funny ha ha's, but you ended up with a funny cringe cringe. Like uh, I don't think emo Santa would appreciate this too much. However, he might see the joy and humor inside of it. New items, new maps, taunts, war paints, war paints, rawr. Other community contributed. Well, what could that mean, Pedro? Other community contributed fixes. Like, what are they going to take for the community and be like, hey, this was broke. Thanks for fixing it for us. The, the anti-bot bots just integrate them. <laughs> Probably, the game. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually took uh, suggestions from the community. It's like, this has been broken since, or this weapon should be uh, very much uh, nerfed or improved, otherwise it's useless. There's There's a lot of suggestions that you can take from the community and i'm not going to say that they're all correct because they're not most people don't really know because it, they eventually are just working for the betterment of their own experience not necessarily everyone's so how do you think when so, you end up on the tf2 team like what do you have to fuck up jordan to get put on the tf2 team at valve uh i, I guess think everyone... you have to you have to be working on artifact and then realize that they <laughs> Mean, I, man. I guess everyone uh, that goes to Valve uh, has the idea of like, I can fix TF2, and then they move their desk to the TF2 area, they find that they're the only ones there, they pull up the no, source no, no, code no, no, and they no, go, no, no, oh no, 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 fuck that shit. There, <laughs> there, there, there is a room with the TF2 devs that like, sometimes, occasionally someone will wheel their desk in, and then someone else will close the door behind them and lock them in, and they are the TF2 dev from now on, and there's just a room full of desks and skeletons that they have to like. Keep it's open. weird, man. You open the closet, and it's like Jim from Guitar Center just chilling out, but you're too afraid to ask questions, so you just close that shit, and you're like, all right, yeah, I'm here now. TF2 room. TF2 room. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I've seen a lot of people over in the wake of this to say that if Valve ever released uh, TF3, <laughs> never going to happen, uh, or at least fix TF2, that Overwatch probably wouldn't stand a chance. I don't think that's entirely no, true. It's, no, it's, no, te- no. it's Team Fortress Infinite. You are, Non-stop. <laughs> it is Team Fortress Legends A, but it is really yeah. cute. It is really cute to see a bunch of people trying to pretend they still give a damn about TF2 on the internet. It's fucking adorable. Good That's job, the thing. guys. If you look I, I, I at like the it's Steam a charts, play TF2. Game. Yeah, metrics, your metrics have no power here, Pedro. But that's the thing. Even being a free-to-play game, uh, comparatively speaking, it's doing fairly poorly, even compared to Overwatch. Well, but, I mean, the uh, bots are having a grand old time. <laughs> that's the thing. Even in the state of complete disrespair, uh, disrepair, disrespair? This repair is still in the top 20 of the most 
actively concurrent players on Steam. So, yeah, <laughs> there, there's um, probably something there. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about a couple of new games that came out this week. Uh, we're slowly crawling out of the dry season. And uh, Parashotical Arctic... Arct- Arctivibidi. Rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> it is, uh, yes, it is a combination of uh, paranautical activity, arc shot, and season's beatings. Uh, so, yeah, I I look at that as like, yeah, no, that, that looks like paranautical activity with the shooty and the uh, generally... Um, oldie style looking graphic. It's just that I see that double barrel shotgun and there's, they didn't bother rendering a hand on there. So I just assume a person's hands that far back on the stock. And I'm like, that's a broke wrist. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, paranautical activity was one of those games back in the day that I'm like, I should like this. This is a first person roguelike type of situation. I should really like this, but I don't. I I don't know why. Pedro, is this memes? Yeah, uh, yeah, a little where, bit, where, yeah. The so season's where, 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 beatings was uh, the, also a very, very here? meme hmm. heavy. <laughs> I, I, I don't see any knots. No, no any ast- astronauts. No, no psychonauts. No Broke-ass castle with no doors. No. <laughs> I mean, I mean that. that listen, <laughs> doors are expensive, man. You can't afford. You can't afford doors. I can barely afford this castle. <laughs> It's priced to sell at four thirty nine, though, right? It, yeah, it is, I, I, yeah. It is very, very cheap. Um, it's less than five pounds here, uh, and it is, yeah. If you can run Paranautical Activity or any of the other two, you can probably run this. It seems to be very much along those lines. So, um, yeah, maybe give it a look. That there's there's a demo there, so you can always just tap that button and see for yourself. <laughs> Uh, that's that's this guy on YouTube. It's rather annoying. I was hoping it was like, oh, and it was free for free. Good on you, mate. Good on you. Creator B. (laughs) Um, yeah, it's procedurally generated levels for FPS. So I I would take a hard pass on that unless it just shows up. You're like, you got to play it. I'm like, fine, I'll play it. (laughs) I'm going to be too busy playing in the back rooms, baby, with my liminal reality. Doesn't this look like a blast where you can explore? Do you, you want to explore the back rooms, right? With all the liminals and the spaces and all the other. The so, back rooms, some, some the single are, uh, most boring concept to come out of 4chan dude, and somehow. Listen to this, Pedro, <laughs> because if you have a crippling fear of empty arse rooms, boy, this trailer's got it for you, man. Like this it, is, It's this, horror, horror super liminal. Uh, this is like layers of fear without the scary. <laughs> the, the, yeah, it's layers of fear the, the, with literally nothing happening. The blandly parable. <laughs> this this reminds me of like moving in first day simulators. This is all this shit is. This is like apartment yeah. shopping simulator. Yeah, this is this is this is gone home. Oh, happy face. Um, little little poopy happy face. It is yeah. like okay, seriously, like right there, like that better be elf's blood, depending on what the rent is, right? I guess. So so like I I I guess the goal of this this thing is like you you walk around. There's like non Euclidean spaces. Shit fucks with you. It's all oppressive atmosphere. I guess I don't. I don't. I don't know. Seems mostly positive. So the people who are into it are into it. I guess. Do you play but this like, like on the ASMR channel or what? Uh, I've seen in a like people playing yeah. versions of this game for the past two years on YouTube, and every time I do, it's like, what? What? What's the point? Sometimes they throw in some SCPs because hey, it came out of 4chan too, so might as well. So uh, I, but, I, I I keep wanting like the dude in this in this trailer to like pick up something and then it just drop it and become super big, like if you could just like introduce some super yeah liminal. like do like super liminal did super liminal was a good game. <laughs> I I I don't know. Uh, it's glitch. Apparently, it's just really glitchy. It is an all caps highly glitchy. Not to be confused with the uh, all caps moderately <laughs> glitchy, but it's slowly yeah, glitchy. highly glitchy, super janky. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> it does require an AMD FX sixty three hundred blast from the past. Man. OG six core, yeah, <laughs> three 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 core three or three floating point six. Mm. Yeah, the, the three like core pairs <laughs> sharing yeah. L two cache. <laughs> so um, neither of you were old enough, but maybe your parents had a C sixty four. Nope, my dad had C sixty four. All right, did he have like a ZX Becky or? A- no, 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 just the like full-on bread box sized uh, c64 did he have, <laughs> did he have the tapes 
uh, there was a tape which did not contain any original games. They were all pirated. <laughs> oh, I, I, <laughs> but I it had it was like three like of them with the time, uh, the time stamps where you had to fast forward to. Mm. Yeah, I had them. Yep. <laughs> so you know, it's kind of interesting though because we don't we don't typically when we think hipster pixel, what we end up with is like nice sharp crisp pixels that never look like that from the eight bit sixteen bit era, and you know that's what passes for pixel games these days, which is always confusing. Nobody really seems to want to go all the way back in time. That's right, Doc. We got to go there to the good stuff, man. Nice that X Spectrum game, dude. Um, <laughs> This is you're just getting the feels. Uh, this is Beep's Escape, where he plays Beep, brave yet cavalier robot, is on a mission to do something in a tech facility. What I don't know. Um, that I mean, that that is some OG like pixel art. The, that skull. Yeah, that's, no, like that's a very shit. spectrum accurate. I'll give them that. <laughs> I mean, it looks right. I mean, this looks period correct, right? It's not. The the movement seems a little too smooth though. That's yeah. The 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 frame rate's a little too smooth for what the poor one twenty eight could do. What but are you talking it, it, about? It was sixty <laughs> FPS, baby. Precinct. Sixteen <laughs> FPS, maybe. <laughs> uh, but no, it is. It does at least like visually speaking. Um, it it looks the part, but it's classic uh, box art too. Yeah. The, the the thing that got me was you see the windows requirements it only needs like 20 megs available and mm-hmm. then you go to the uh, linux requirements and it needs 300 <laughs> pedro that's because you have to install wsl <laughs> okay <laughs> is that how they measured it <laughs> maybe probably yeah <laughs> better tell you in some games fair yeah. enough <laughs> well, you know, you know, there there was that one open source game. It was like, yeah, I tested this on my Raspberry Pi, and I'm like, yo, good. If it runs on that, it'll run on fucking anything. Well, I really this reminded me, you know, Beep for some reason reminded me of Beep, <laughs> the other game called Beep, uh, it's completely <laughs> free to play uh, from Big Fat Alien. It was back Whoa. in 2011. What was that one game that whenever you started it up, you got that like awful ear rape, like Beep. We, we oh, threw chairs on uh, it recently. Yes, or not. we did. I don't do not remember the name of it, which is probably a good thing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's that, good. <laughs> that's probably, yeah, blo- block that off. <laughs> Two game updates this week, and we're going to start off with our favorite thing in the world: auto cannons. Yeah, new dome. Who dis? Yeah, the new dome dropped, and yeah, this is the update for Dome Keeper. They added three new gadgets so that you can run and hurry back and upgrade before monsters blow up your dome. You got an auto cannon, which is a second computer controlled gun that you can upgrade. Um, there is a detector to actually point you in the direction of those mats that you desperately need for the, um, for the, you know, the, the aforementioned running back. And at last, but not least, there's some point defense because, you know, there are enemies that have ranged attacks and this is a thing that'll intercept them. These are all great things for your dome that you have no time to gather the resources to build. So you got to decide which one you really, really, really want. And I, I'm I'm glad to see more work happening on this game. It was it was one of them that I thought I think all of us were like we were totally ready to write this off. But then the gameplay loop got us, man. Like, oh, it's, it's it real. is relatively uncommon where I will uninstall a game to just to save myself. <laughs> I'm like I, I don't need this in my life because uh, I'd spend too much time playing with it. You, you get your cute little pets, and then you do, this game plays off your like greed, which I was mm-hmm. such a huge fan of, of where it punishes you for trying to be too greedy and delving on uh, mining too dark deeply. Yeah. And uh, it's just a brilliant game. Like every little bit of press this thing gets uh, is absolutely well deserved at seventeen ninety nine. Um, yeah, auto cannons, fuck the world. It is genuinely a very very nice game. And yeah, no, the, to, to what Jordan was saying, the whole uh, you think that you're not gonna like it because oh, you have to defend the thing, and in the down period, you have to go and mine for stuff. And I thought well, you oh, got like thirty great. seconds. Yeah, it, it's going to be. Like, I, you can actually enjoy either the digging or the tower defense because you're always going to have to be running from one side to the other. But it works so well. God damn, they actually made that work really well. Seriously. Yeah, the game loop, yeah, loop, loop, loop in that is methamphetamine cocaine crack. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, yeah, because it, 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 it's basically like you're, you're making that split second calculus of like, oh, I'm you, not going to make it. Oh, you, I'm not going to make it. No, I'm going to drop all decision. my shit. Yeah, yeah. you're juggling all kind of shit. My brain loves. <laughs> That so it, uh, it, it, it is worked. a tight fucking it worked loop. really really well yeah if, if you haven't checked it out definitely go pick up Dome Keeper it is 
Oh, oh man. Um, man, this game's so old. I remember when it had Linux support. Kind of. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, yes. didn't never really worked terribly well, uh, no matter how many times we tried. And we did. Okay, Pedro, how long, <laughs> how, how many, like eight to nine months, there was a small bug the first time you shot your weapon, it crashed to the desktop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It was, uh, I can't remember if it was the audio that was triggered or if it was the muzzle flash, but something, whenever you shot, if you were playing as one of the humans, if you fired a shot, the game would crash. Uh, it was that bad, but it, it sort of kind of worked for a time. And then they gave up on the Linux versions like, no, nah, it's just Windows. And then they said, no, nah, we're going to give it to the community. And now the community is saying, you know what? No, that's, um, we're done. No one's really been playing the game. No one's really been um, actively developing it from the look of it. And the, well, the people who were basically maintaining it on Steam said, we're going to take it down. It's uh, They do say that the dedicated servers will still be available for people to host uh, their own servers if they want. I don't know why you'd want to if you're going to they're, put they're any still, kind of... Uh... They're still also keeping the uh, the main servers up as well, at least until as long as they can afford to run them. So yes, <laughs> uh, but it, like the main servers will go down eventually because let's face it, they're not going to be making enough money at all to. I, um, it's, it's still a better love story than Marvel's Avengers, man. Like, like ten, ten years is yes. a pretty long time for a game. Like <laughs> it is, give, give, and we so, can definitely probably get like Epic to host it. <laughs> They yeah, don't even like, want to host their own single player games. <laughs> it's 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 a little sad because like now I really like the first natural selection. It was pretty neat, and NS two never worked well enough for me to actually like play play it. Uh, so it's kind of kind of one of those sad ships in the nights. Well, but like a, a that lot ship of people also could never defeat no uh, natural selections to his mini boss, which was the initial Tutorial. load time. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> like the initial load on that game was minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Which the, was, uh, did they ever release a uh, natural selection to source code? No, no, I don't think they no. ever did because like it started off being like a source two game and then they switched to their own engine or mm-hmm. they like heavily modified source two to the point where it like lost upstream with it. The um, original natural selection w- went open source. Um, mm-hmm. I think yeah. that, that was uh, gold source though. That was like OG half-life. Yeah, it was like back in, um, mm-hmm. What like that was like almost ten years ago. Uh that one uh, but yeah, natural selection too. If you want to keep wait, what is this a GitHub topic? Um no, just a bunch of mods. <laughs> no, uh if you're going to d- dedicate your attention to something like natural selection too, but you want it to still be actively supported uh-huh. and actively developed and have an active player base, unvanquished. Yeah, I mean it it is an NS clone, pretty much. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> unvanquished seriously <laughs> being on this podcast taught me about unvanquished and that game doesn't get anywhere near enough attention unvanquished so seriously. i want you to go play unvanquished with the types of people that still play unvanquished and immediately get reconated <laughs> and come back and tell pedro like why pedro you gotta, you gotta why did you good. put me through that you gotta get good scrub dodge <laughs> Well, coming coming up next, AMD's trying to dodge by open sourcing some FSR tech. That's so neat. blurry and sparkly. Is it a vampire? The news they are coming. Don't you worry. We they we are need coming. To, both yeah, of we, them. Both newses. Uh, well, well, four of them, four, but two, you know, two, two close enough. <laughs> uh, we will get to them. Don't you worry. But we will, um, as usual have to put a, the kibosh on the um can, can well, we put the, a can we put a kibosh on portrait photography pedro we can put the kibosh on dortrait photography not that one no. <laughs> you, you, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> that pay, one's pay gonna stay indoors. there until it fades entirely it won't be long if you look at the bottom of the picture it's already fading so it'll be gone soon enough Soon it will uh, just no, be whiteness. We, on the other hand, will not be gone anywhere near soon enough, if you ask certain people on the internet. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if, if you, if you want to pay us in chairs, because apparently this is the latest doors. form of currency. Doors, yes. <laughs> doors are the currency that we accept. Chairs come later. Uh, you can head you on can over to Patreon. Shaped doors. Door-shaped chairs, maybe? I, I, I can put hinges on chairs. I mean, if you have, if you have like, a door in a chair, it's kind of like a toilet. Fucking witness me, bitch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you so, take one of the fold-out uh, lounge chairs, then yeah. Lawn doors. Ha- ha- haven't you seen Casino Royale? Anyways, 
Uh, Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. It's better than a wet towel to the balls, that's for sure. Do you Sub- think we could get like a, uh, an electric door? Yeah, yes, but okay. we can't get a revolving door. That's out of the budget. Mm-hmm. Unless you help us out. Um, yeah, you can get access to our Discord channel uh, by the joining us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Sub there. Get into there. Uh, talk to us. RSVP for game streams. Ben's doing Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays, and I do Borderlands 3 on Thursdays. So if you want to play some games with us, get into our Discord, RSVP, and uh, you can get in that. We got a store, store store.linuxgamecast.com, where you can buy your filthy merch, buy a sticker, stick it on your Hell Elks mug, and fill it with liquid and pour it all over your uh, Frank Frank file. Put Frank 1999 on your door. Send me a picture. Spill it on your Frank sweatshirt. Yeah. Put (laughs) put that poster and let it fade into nothingness. Don't Uh, put a t-shirt on your door. Do do it. I mean, you do, can, but that that do it. Do it every one. Li- I'm not your mom. Waste. <laughs> uh, we got us. We got uh, wish zones as well. If you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, mouse over the support button. Ben has one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. I have one. You can buy us stuff and send us little notes that we have to read for you on the internet. If you send Ben some stuff, bonus soda, you get your name on the wall behind him. Look at it. It's, it's all you can blink and shiny, dude. Our <laughs> audio cool. audio listeners love that. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Listen, listen they, they, they can that? they can hear the blinking. It goes. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, we, we got some people to thank. Uh, we got to thank uh, Chloe Cat Otter for uh, resubbing to us on the Twitches, and we got to thank David for increasing his pleasant pe- or his uh, Patreon pledge. Latest too. executive producer, and I fucking mm-hmm. love the reason, David. David <laughs> just dropped it out because we were talking about some game last week, and I'm like, that motherfucker looks like MC Pants. Uh, and that's what David writes, and he's like, I have my patron support because you mentioned. MC P pants. Damn. Right. You, will, will, will you do that every time we mention MC P like pants? Candy. I don't know, man. <laughs> like if, if we just, if we just say like MC P pants, like 50 times, here's like, a real question. Um, is like MC P pants considered a deep cut? Like I probably not so. to I, our, our group. Cause that's like series not, one aqua teen hunger. So 20 years ago for like one episode, well, there was like a rapping spider from hell. Who, well, who the, who the fuck knows about MC Chris these days, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Ner- ner- Nerdcore was like a lot more in the, Nerdcore happened and it didn't, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's still around. Like it's just all on like SoundCloud. Clefet. I got back. Why you gotta I'm back play back. Got your hate on IGA? <laughs> all, right. all right, well yeah, we, we we gotta get into the news segment. Thank you for your support. You're awesome. Coming out with us and uh, yeah, AMD. No it's not AMD. drivers, but it's eh, driver adjacent. Uh, AMD FSR 2.2 is out, and of course, like with most uh, GPU stuff that AMD releases, they have also unleashed the sauce. Uh, I hope this means uh, that uh, more games will have it. That would actually be awesome. Historically, though, whenever AMD releases something, unless it's FSR, you know, the first one, uh, doesn't really seem to get as much adoption just by making it open source as one well, would hope. I'm looking that, at this 110 available upcoming games with FSR2, gentlemen, and I'm seeing what I want to wish into existence. That is Farming Simulator 22 Hitman. Yes. <laughs> Listen, you, you, you fertilize your crops by murdering people and burying them in your farm. Well, like, Pedro, you, you bring up episode FSR 1.1, and, like, that got everywhere because you could turn it on whether the game liked it or not via game Yeah, you could do like, it in post-processing instead of having to do it yeah. in, like, um, this, yeah, anti-aliasing this, layers. Yeah, the, this this whole having to actually implement it in your game. We have, we have a bit of a problem with software developers being allergic to, like, doing software development sometimes. So <laughs> Having to do it themselves, yeah. Yeah, so uh, but Jordan, may if not, my game is really popular. Not only will they send somebody over to do it, they'll give me money. Well, that's NVIDIA, not <laughs> AMD, NVIDIA. man. <laughs> There's a reason, yeah. DLS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, here's the thing at the end of the day, though, FSR 2.1, which you probably tasted it, you got a little taste of it. I mean, it works with protons and all that. It's already kind of close to DLSS 2. So, uh, I mean, if you squint a little bit, happy to see this. Maybe, do you think somebody's going to do something with it, though? That's kind of the thing, isn't it? Like, is anybody going to implement this? Are we going to be seeing Super Tux Card? That would be nice. No, no, but we will see Super Tux, (laughs) just to confuse us. I I really wish Super Tux Card would actually try to use some of what AMD has released open source in the past, but they haven't even released their game on Steam yet because of... 
licensing uh, issues. That's mean. So, they just say they're French. <laughs> they, they, they claim it was because of licensing issues. So I, I, I don't know uh, if, if they like AMD's choice of license and that's why they're not doing it. I don't why know. would they do? You know what needs to have FSR? <laughs> you know what? Live a little. Blender. For the what, previous, what, yeah. That, no, no, no. What, 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 what license is this under? Does it say? <laughs> do, 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 license, that's a, license. Quit. That's like a professional question. We don't cover that. <laughs> no, we 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 don't. We want to talk about software. Uh, it's probably. Uh, I don't know what. Am I? Yeah. Let's let's just spitball the license. And uh, it me. is uh, view view license is. GitHub. Uh, it is its own license. It is licensed under the uh, AMD whatever it is. Free, free of charge. Okay, so it would probably be because of licensing issue. <laughs> Permission is hereby granted. Uh, limited rights, software, following conditions, copyright notice, uh, soft as is, without warranty. Yeah, pretty much says take it. Uh, go yep. forth and fuck with it. Um, more, more or less. That's yeah, almost no, like Zedlib. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, but very, 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 very minimal licensing. So it's probably not that. It, it, maybe they'll implement a new Dolphin one day. Do you know who loves licensing? Nintendo? No, no, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> like, as in, they don't? They don't let it go ever? <laughs> they don't want you to mess with anything. And I'm saying that as I'm looking over the Dolphin EMU page and I'm like, do I dare play any of these videos? Um, Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little scared. We need to talk about the progress report. They kind of piled on with the December and January 2023. If you don't know Dolphin, that's our GameCube emulator, right? Uh, we and GameCube. And we. Wii Cube. Yes. Finally fixing. Okay, here's the big thing. Here's the big. Let me. Do, I, I'm burying, Skylanders <laughs> burying the lead. They <laughs> finally have fixed what everyone has just long held. Said the game breaking bug. There it is, right there for our, um, <laughs> video. You can see the reflections. Um, <laughs> game breaking <laughs> bugs and Quake GX. You know, until very recently. You know, the homebrew port of Quake, the shareware to the Wii, uh, it suffered a massive graphical glitch, making it completely, totally 100% unplayable. The real fake bump mapping has been implemented, it's been restored, and you can now finally play. Look at that. Night and day. You can actually play it now. You can see the reflections of the light, Pedro, on the walls and other normal mapped effects. Unlike this smear a photo of whatever that's supposed to be on the left side. Like, I can't even make out what that's supposed to be. <laughs> Mustard. I think it's a, one of those light pillars. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you use your imagination. Who, who knows? Who can tell? Who can tell? Oh, look, it's little baby girl. girl. There's a bunch of Sanks and a bunch of Zeldas, but a couple of things going on with this update. Um, they removed the ability to boot DVD backups. And as you might have guessed, the seven people that even knew that was a fucking option came out of the woodworks and they're complaining about it. And so they, they said they might revisit it, but they're <laughs> not going to make any promises. And um, Amiibo type things, right? Yeah, the Skylanders toys. It was like a collectible miniature game. Do we have a visual uh, aid? I thought it passed yeah, over. The, yeah, the, the, there it is. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's like a little Fargate. And, uh, yeah, you, you would plug a toy in it. and like So how it actually works is there's just a QR code and... The, the, no, nothing's actually stored in the mini itself. It's an NFT. You, you, sca yeah, you scan it and it unlocks it in the game. Um, so normally they had this supported via USB, like the thing just plugged into a USB port so you could hook it up. Uh, Dolphin would recognize it. You could scan your Skylanders things. But people who are playing on mobile don't necessarily have a USB thing they can plug in. So now you can just uh, you can just create an app them That's and like not have to play, pay for a physical DRM. That's targeted at iPhone users, isn't it? <laughs> a, little, a little bit. Well, speak, speaking speaking of mobile, uh, they were they were looking into some uh, performance issues for on mobile or on performance constrained systems, and they happened upon a new mysterious hack that seems to make uh, V blank skip just work magically, but only for GameCube. They tried implementing it in PCSXR uh, or PCSSX2, and it just didn't work. The game's fucked up, so no one understands why th this particular thing does work uh, in terms of frame skip and slowdown, but uh, the end result is that if you're on an Android phone or if you're on a weaker system, you will actually be able to play some games that were previously just completely unplayable. And if you're into the Mario Kart Wii and you want it to play on like the popular community servers, which were behind CTGP Revolution, well, now you can. Uh, they actually, uh, you if you 
read the article or if you have been following Dolphin wanting to play Mario Kart Wii through Dolphin on the quote-unquote uh, official community uh, servers, you probably realize that they, at first, CTGP did not want to support Dolphin because it made cheating really, really easy. There's literally a tick list with boxes that you could just tick, and all of a sudden, you have access to a bunch of advantages that people playing on physical hardware don't have. Or they could, but it's a lot harder to actually do the cheats on the um, Wii itself than it is on Dolphin. So now they're um, implementing a way that you can play if you have an official um, ISO ripped from your own game. And if you have a legitimate Wii ID that has never been banned for cheating, you can. So that's that's a positive. I think you, you might still get banned <laughs> for cheating though if you're going like, to actually probably, go into yeah. the game and cheat. Yeah. How don't. long do you think it's going to take for um, somebody to implement? Because I know there's been a lot of work. I saw uh, Modern Vintage Gaming, I believe. Uh, he's done a couple of things on uh, people making their own like Xbox One network. Like the original mm -hmm. Xbox, they're like yeah, bringing the, 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 it back themselves and mm -hmm. rebuilding all the back end. Do you think that we're going to see that for like the, uh, cause you got to think about it. The, uh, Wii and the Wii U and like the, even the yeah, GameCube, the e like it was like the early days of online. Um, mm -hmm. gaming, yeah. Like, like, yeah. And, and like the eShop specifically on the Wii U, like that, that shit shut down like mm -hmm. forever now. So, um, so yeah, yeah, yes, like, re, re, do it like the uh, Xbox people did. Just have the server be able to be run from a Raspberry Pi, since it's only handling. It's not actually storing or rendering anything locally. It's just handling the information back and forth. Please, yes, maintain even after Nintendo or whoever doesn't care about their consoles anymore. That would be well, they're, they're, they're going to sell you like the Wii Mini, right? As long as you play them again and again and again. <laughs> Yeah, and they they would like you to buy the game again and again and again. Hey everyone, something you don't have to pay for is the fifty-two staff picks from the Ludum Dare. Ludum Dare, yeah, it's Ludum, a Ludum. 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 It's Ludum. a game jam that happens every year. Um, the theme this year was Harvest, and the winner was Daniel Mullins. You know, the inscription slash Pony Island guy. <laughs> That's a bit of a ringer. That's like you know if. You know, you have a nice community boxing tournament and then Mike Tyson just fucking shows up and starts like <laughs> knocking people on their asses. I don't I don't know, man. It seems seems a little unfair. Just just, just a tidge. But, you know, good, good, good on you, Daniel. It's a good time. Um, there's a bunch of cool games here. Uh, I like settlement because I like hexagons and yeah, I'm, I'm just super into hexagons, you guys. Um, and yeah, there's some har harvest season looks kind of interesting a little bit. A lot of these are done in It's uh, one Unity. of those, uh, you can't uh, actually defeat the bad guy because it's a haunted combine harvester, uh, and you only have oh. a shotgun. <laughs> so Swir uh, the most you can do is, like, me. scare it away after you deal enough damage. No, uh, Fallow Tide was the one that kind of caught my eye, the, uh, the card game with the goat. <laughs> <laughs> that was it's like okay all right no that that that's that's pretty cool N neighborly love also looks neat because it's like a farming simulator but you get to like kill the other farmer yeah so. mm -hmm. usually when there's a line down the middle i'm like all right yeah. you got my attention Wait, what's going on here a combat okay done magnets let's do this um always good to see um what's going on with that uh all this is gonna be in our show notes too so don't worry yeah. about it pop over and there. And a lot of a lot of Ludum Dare games like actually spin off into into actual things like um, right. sacrifices must be made was the demo mm -hmm. for uh, Ludum Dare a couple of years ago that got turned into inscription. So right. go forth and play. And like Jordan said, there's a play button for a lot of these. You just play them right in the browser. No yep. problem. Yep. So oh. li li living in the, you can play Counter Strike in the browser, man. We're fucking living in the future. I was uh, speaking of like stuff you can play in the browser. This is a bit roundabout. I want to talk about it real quick. Uh, Carmack was talking about about. You know, old man, old Carmack yells at the development processes uh, on Twitter. Or it might have been for somebody interviewing him. And he brought up Quake Live. Mm. I remember playing Quake Live in the browser on Linux and Firefox because it was a thing we could do. It was like, oh, just web assembly. Yeah. That was, that was like the first you, big web. You had to get a plugin. Game. You had to download a plugin in order for it to work. But um, I mean, it did. You could play in like, you know, four by three glory. It turns out, like, he was talking about like, sunk cost benefit and stuff like you know keeping servers and projects and applications you know up and running past mm -hmm. their prime time it's like it doesn't cost cost a lot to put a developer on something he was talking about meta stuff getting closed mm -hmm. down those smaller projects 
And he brought up, he's like, yeah, for years and years, there was only one person, one developer on all of Quake Live. To which I read that and I'm like, I knew it. <laughs> As you were, Midi Force. Yes. It, yes. All right. So we, uh, we, we brought this up a couple weeks ago. I think it might have been last week. I don't know what time is anymore. Force Engine, Dark Forces, Jedi Knight, that got released open source and had Linux builds available um, before there were some issues with the sound system. Those have been fixed. You no longer need external MIDI devices. Also, we got a little Steam Deck fixy fixes. Uh, stack size requirements go down. Support for 800p. All good stuff. And we got a fancy schmancy new binary name. It's called The Force Engine. Because the force. Because somebody likes typing a lot. That's the only fucking reason I come up with. Yeah, it's <laughs> T-H-E, tab, 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 tab. Tough, <laughs> tough. Um, you know, it, it's nice to see 800p for the Steam Deck. It is. I'm, I'm glad we're seeing that, especially in open source projects. And uh, it makes a point about bringing out like the AWE sound file on Sopal 3. Like, I don't understand, man. Um, <laughs> That's how Lutris fixed it. <laughs> if you were trying to get the Force Engine running through Lutris, Strider was very proud that it pulled all of the uh, the sound fonts automatically and you could just do it. <laughs> Why? Some people are just like like strangely hung up on like 80s and 90s um, musical beat boops being MIDI or uh, sound blasters, stuff like that. I'm like, that, shit, that sounded bad, man. <laughs> but hey, I don't do know. You. There, there's, there's a part of the lizard brain that gets it's tickled nostalgia. by nostalgia. Yeah, yeah and it's it's like, is, man. Yeah. It, it's just weird to be like, it gives, oh, it gives you those chills. Mm-hmm. You're just like, transports you the for Roland like a split MT32. second yeah the the youtuber favorite yes oh. yeah. transports <laughs> so, you for a split second back to like 1998 when you're in front of in your in your, at your parents computer you're like i want to go back i guess i guess uh but it, hey it's there now you got the option and yeah the force engine of why, why just make the binary tfe come on do it do it do you it you could just make that available yes uh, it, it, I it's, saw it's pronounced the, do it <laughs> I saw the um the, the blog release announcement. Nice one do got to show up and chop this damn X name down a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, we have an app image and a flat pack in the works. It's like, okay, before you do either of those, just give us a tar GZ with the thing already compiled, please. No, nah. I, uh, no, this is gatekeeping. Shut up. That, that, that's what Lucius <laughs> is for. Just Clearly. try to make your job a little bit easier on that one. <laughs> No, that that requires doing that requires doing development, man. Make it an app image that installs Snap. An app it just image runs Snap for, uh, de- containerized <laughs> in the no, app it, image. Yeah. It, it, it is a Snap that containerizes Flatpak D that then pulls an app image. <laughs> Divide by zero, bitches. Yeah, it just it just turtles all the way down. Coming up next. Do you want to pick your friend up and throw him at enemies? Mm. Well, you can in this game. Right. Throwing chairs at Aurora's Journey and the Pitiful Wacky. Oh, Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where we take a game, run it on a bunch of different Linuxes, and give you a pitiful score based on lawn chairs. One chair means that it's garbage. Four chairs means that it's amazing. This week, we're taking a look at Aurora's Journey and the Pitiful Wacky. It's just full title, of man. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Full of Aurora Borealises. We got it developed by the not so great team, done on UE4. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks US. What is it? Join Aurora and the Lackey in the side scrolling adventure with run and gun and platformer mechanics, mini games, and lots of enemies. In 19 Dickity 7, Aurora, a young astronomer, <laughs> receives the journal of her father, who disappeared four years earlier and embarks on a journey to find him. Gotta thank the not so great team for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. And now it's Pedro's turn to talk. <laughs> yes. And what a talk it will be. Uh, 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 Here, both on the desktop and on the Steam Deck, it does not launch out of the box. A quick analysis of the files in the uh, folder that it creates in Steam apps, it showed no Linux binaries present. Uh, In fact, when I checked the Steam DB uh, depot section to see if there were any Steam binaries, uh, there weren't any there either. Tapping the uh, Proton button makes the game work as intended on both the desktop and the deck, so minus one chair. If you're advertising a game for Linux and it doesn't have a Linux binary, yeah, you kind of done goofed. On the deck, it doesn't seem to be able to maintain 60 FERPs unless you cut the visual preset down to performance, um, which, you know, fair enough. On the desktop, I tried disabling VSync and uh, set the frame rate to unlimited, but it made no difference. It's all 60 all the time. 
the controllers work, but you can't rebind inputs uh, on it, or uh, if you're using the keyboard and the mouse, you can't rebind those either. Yes, you can use Steam input, but the game itself offers no such solution. Uh, and the in order to shoot, you use the right trigger or the left bumper to use the little laser thingy, and to aim, you use the right analog stick. Guess which two inputs my uh, malformed right hand can't reach at the same time. Yeah, so I had to play with the mouse and keyboard until I picked up the uh, <laughs> the alpaca and realized, wait a second, with the gyro implementation, this actually works. So yeah, you can have your own true DIY controller to work around the game's limitations. That 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 seems feasible. Minus one chair on that one. Uh, the graphics are all right. The sound matches what the visuals indicate, except for the voice acting or mostly lack thereof. It's a sp Spanish voice acting. It was done by a Spanish team, which I was not aware. But uh, when you get to the store and you start talking to the store owner, you hear um, a protagonist, which I presume to be called Aurora, actually say, uh, hola, in Spanish. So there we go. Uh, as for the fun, yeah, I'm How pretty sure. How do you sure say hola in French? <laughs> Bonjour. Salut. <laughs> Just there, <laughs> there's a few options but yeah the um as for the fun yes it would probably be a very fun game from what i've been able to play of it it seems fairly well done in the story department and it got more than a few chuckles out of me they're going for the slapstick comedy and in my opinion they kind of nailed it uh the first like 30 40 minutes of the game are kind of run of the mill they're not very funny but as soon as you get past like the first two bosses and you get to this part that's about to come up it, they did a very good job of making the lackey extremely annoying and aurora uh very very funny in the way that she writes um <laughs> there's a little tutorial screen uh up which one of the keys is slap the lackey and that's important <laughs> but yeah it it is unfortunate that I can't enjoy the game because the controls are not rebindable. I died a lot getting through like the first few areas that shouldn't have been all that difficult, but everything was made harder because I had to play in an uncomfortable position on my arms, having my right hand and my left hand on the mouse and my right hand on was so that I could play it like this. Right up until I remember that the alpaca has a really nice gyro implementation. So yeah. Though the uh, the courier bit that's on screen right now, uh, driving some 1930s pickup that does 120 speed units, it, that was actually fun to drive, and I could just use my left hand to waz around, so that was fine. Uh, I want I, I wanted to give this game a higher score, but the lack of Linux binaries, while claiming to be a Linux game, and the inability to rebind controls makes it so I can't really recommend it, regardless of how fun or funny. It may otherwise be two chairs. Uh, ben, you're, you're going next? Or no, you I are. <laughs> I am? All right. I thought, I thought it was paid to Ben me. Oh, yeah. you want to go? Yeah, do, am I supposed to go next? Sure. Yeah, I thought, I thought that's what we talked about. I wasn't paying attention to what I said, man. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So check it out, man. Over here on Debian Testing Land, which will soon be um, Debian 12. I know. I know. Time flies when you're having fun. Game doesn't launch when you download it and you click the play button. You're like, well, it's been a minute. It's been, man, like I've been dealing with this for a decade, which we have. Um, what Pedro said is uh, absolutely true. They didn't ship uh, Linux binaries. In fact, there's no trace of Linux on this whatsoever outside of their store page where they're like, hey, give us some money and uh, we're not going to give you what you paid for. I cleared off 90 minutes like I do on a Friday. Here we are. And that 90 minutes is more than they bothered to QA the product for putting up for sale, man. In 2023, that Steam Deck moving the needle a little bit. Linux isn't just your random hobby, hyper nerd operating system that occasionally play games. It's on probably the second most popular handheld. Well, it'll probably end up being, do you think it'll ever overtake the Switch? Probably not. But nah. I think the Steam Deck will definitely be in like the top five portable gaming devices ever released. And it's running Linux and it doesn't run out of the box on Steam Deck. I wasn't very happy with that. However, the few available options, if you tap that Proton button, it does work. Uh, full screen windowed. That's good. Controller worked. And that's kind of a bonus since fuck me if I could figure out how to uh, navigate any menus or engage any menus using the keyboard. Just didn't seem to want to work at all. As far as the graphics, you know what? Nice GameCube demo. 
I'll say that. Um, I'm just going to be real quick on the fun though. I want to say, I just want to apologize to everybody because I didn't get a chance to test this out until Friday. If I'd been on top of this quicker, I would have just scrapped this from being on the chair acquisition. I take full responsibility for that, but does it make with the fun? It doesn't. I mean, this is baby's first that game. And what I mean by that is this is the side scroller version versus the top down laser point, wave it around, shoot a pew pew type game. Laser point here, and you know, you get the occasional puzzle, kind of stretching the word puzzle here. This might have worked maybe as a point and click adventure game, or like if it was like 3D conceptualized something. I don't know. This platforming to convey the storytelling, and you're seeing this 3D time filling segment that Pedro decided to inflict on himself. Like, no, fuck all this. Uh, also, like, like your art arts reasonably well for like maybe what you're going for but like the game all, all the game stuff in this is bad man it's not good i don't like it um also i don't understand why Pedro's being so generous but if you lie about your operating system support on your page you get one chair from me yeah so on fedora 37 64 bit with the r9 3900x and the gtx 1080 ti i tried to launch it um apparently they are They've started to ship binaries in the Linux depot, but they are just the Windows binaries because a wine dialog box popped up I'm like creating new wine prefix, to which I said, fuck that noise. Uh, switched it over to Proton and it launches. Uh, once you game, once you get the game into the game, it's another situation entirely. Uh, you do need Steam input enabled for any controls to work. And the menu doesn't really make it clear what keyboard buttons you're supposed to press. Uh, after a couple seconds, I eventually settled on F as the yes key and escape on the nose on the no key. There are no others. Um, once you get steam input enabled, that's all sorted. Uh, the graphics are very basic program art and some canned assets. They get the job done. The soundtrack. I don't know. Some people seem to like it based on the reviews. I just think it's kind of meh. Fun wise. Yeah. It, uh, it's, it, it kind of sucks. You got, you got a little pea shooter, a shield buster and your little robot buddy. And the robot buddy is the only thing that does any real damage. And they're on dignity cooldown if you use them too much. There's some puzzling you can do with them as well. Uh, but between all of that are the unskippable expedition cutscenes that never fucking end. And the long stretches of nothing in which you just walk around and do nothing and admire the scenery. And, like, I, I don't know. You're showing me this cute little town that apparently you can explore and do jobs for later, but like, if you're going to make me walk through it, like give me the opportunity to explore stuff or like use that to give the exposition for like the state of the world instead of these like 20 minute long exposition dumps. I, I, I don't know. I feel there's some presentation issues. Um, and like, yeah, um, I, I, like ga gameplay wise, it doesn't click. And we've been doing a lot of these side scrolling adventure shooter beat em up things. This one doesn't really stack up. Like the core gameplay of scrambling around while you wait for your buddy to feel better might work on paper, but like in practice, it's kind of annoying and unengaging. And like, you can't hit anything that's remotely off screen. You have really lackluster movement. There's some really sus iframes and like, it's not even uh, exciting to like try and run around and dodge when you're waiting for your buddy to be able to be shot again. Because like there's there's no mobility options and like if something kind of grazes you, uh, you you take damage unless you hit it in the middle of the hitbox, in which case you are immune. It's, yeah, here's the thing. This feels like a third year computer science project. And if I were a computer science professor professor or like a game dev professor, I'd probably end up giving this a B because it's pretty functional and it would probably do what I would ask the student to do on the assignment. Unfortunately, the chair acquisition is the university of hard knocks, so you only get one chair. Oh, no, man. Um, what do we think? Like, uh, at the end of the day, Pedro, I know you're a big fan of tell, don't show, right? <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of show, <laughs> don't tell. And uh, this uh, one doesn't really nice. tell you much of anything ever. Uh, and it, it does a very good job of, uh, once you get past those first 40 minutes, it does <laughs> open up. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah. a hard sell. It, it really yeah, is. If, it, you, if you're telling is, me I gotta suffer 40 minutes before yes, the game, you, you need to uh, stew in the boiling water for 40 minutes before the outer uh, layer of your skin boils off, and uh, you can actually just enjoy being there without feeling like you're uh, on fire. But it is 
it is it's funny. The game was genuinely funny once you get past that first introductory bit. Well, I'm watching your video right now and I'm like, you're already like trying to have some fun by drifting because you're bored is to fucking tears of yeah, doing this fetch question. No, th- that's the thing. The the bit about slapping the lackey, every now and then he starts screaming or uh, which, which singing we, which, which we can't very, hear very because, poorly. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I'm, I'm talking about like you drifting right now. The, the drifting is just because the you're physics bored. are, you know, weird. You're having fun. You're amusing <laughs> yeah. yourself. I know what you're doing. I mean, it, lo- it looks but like you're driving back and forth and back and forth. That's exactly and back and forth. what he's doing. He's yes, like, I gotta that, find that, something that, to break up the monotony. You're doing a courier job. That's uh, the quest that you have to amass a thousand monies to progress to the next bit. And you can either go back to your house and write a book, which is also very funny, which is the bit that I recorded after this. Uh, or you can do the courier job, which, yeah, if you screw do, up, do a, you get the little get <laughs> slow down. It's like, now, now you gotta go back and find another crate. It do you, Do you at least get an NFT at the end of it? Like... For all this work you're doing? <laughs> no, you just get the, the necessary currencies to progress the story. And then you do more uh, of the platformy bits. And uh, it it's funny. The game, the slapstick comedy is well done. It got some chuckles out of me. That's why I was that generous to it. But yeah, no. No um, rebindable controls and no Linux version when you claim to have one. Yeah, that that's minus so two chairs right you there. You would know more about this. Like in 1924, <laughs> had they not uh, discovered like the little eye things for the glasses? The, 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 the nose pinchers? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's part of what they're going for there. Uh, the uh, not really a hipster because she is from the 1920s. Dude, did you see her poor dad? <laughs> the poor girl, her dad was a hipster. Did you see his mustache? It was a ha- up, upside down handlebar. <laughs> That dude had like three fixies at home. <laughs> and she's one of them. All right. All right. That's going to do it for us. Coming up next, can gaming defeat the perils of old age? I don't know. Can gaming defeat the perils of old age? It's a tale as old as time. My eye was itchy right as Ven was doing the countdown, and I'm like, oh, damn, I got to finish. Dude, it was a race between your itchy eye and uh, my Raspberry Pi 4. Like, I'm doing something else, Ben. I don't care if you press the button on the Steam Deck. I'm busy. Maybe maybe, maybe you just got to, like, pour some queso on your SD cards and then, like, stick them in your eye. That's a much longer Uh, version. Delicious, delicious SD cards. uh, Are your hot, sticky, (laughs) sweet? Pour some queso on me. Yeah. That that sounds like pour some sugar on me, but a lot more screaming. Pour some queso on me. Make cheesy. Like a mariachi metal cover. It, yeah, I, I'm that, just saying, at the end of that song, somebody <laughs> you, you might know, get you know, arrested. There, there, there is actually a mariachi metal band called Metalachi. I, I never doubted it. <laughs> I didn't know for sure, but I never doubted it. And if you uh, had any doubts, well, now uh, we hope that we can uh, clear them out for you. But you need to send us your uh, questions first. Go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill think at the bottom of the page. we can do it like Jeopardy where they send in answers? And we have to guess the question? Yeah. We could give you, it a shot. You can. <laughs> you can, can absolutely we? try that. I don't can know. Can we, though? <laughs> we'll ask the boss. <laughs> Aren't you the boss? No, Frank's the boss. That's Frank. Okay, doesn't the boss live with you? <laughs> That doesn't mean shit. Yeah, I mean, listen. Don't 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 pull this just because you're fucking the boss yeah, type thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, Pedro. That's you, like you live with once Nori. every are now you, and then. At are most. you in charge? Are you in charge, Pedro? No. Why? Why would you yeah. assume that other people are yeah. right? Like, does, does, does that look like a fucking pushover? I think not. Does this look like someone who responds to reasonable requests? Fair. <laughs> Me? No. <laughs> Well, uh, Rev, 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 I, I just, I, I just imagine Nori like halfway through like a thought out like argument. She's like, no, fuck this. No. Why, why, why are we wasting yeah, our no, time? No, let's here? just, yeah. no. Well, we get, we get, uh, oh, oh, no, dude. Then, then Pedro's like, so you're not going to lick this off my finger? <laughs> a, a, a little sauce? It's just red. I am the one who cooks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we had one little comment uh, last week uh, when we were talking about, hey, why should you keep playing video games or why, why, it's a, why is it a good idea? Like, say you, you got some years on you and you're thinking about it, like maybe get into it. Well, it's no different than getting into doing Sudoku. 
while uh, rollerblading and uh, fighting off vampires. Sudoku roller derby sounds like a pretty fun hobby. Pretty much. <laughs> Rev writes in, left a YouTube comment, and I want to put this up. It's about elder gaming, man. Um, 50-year-old Gen Xer here, dot, dot, dot. Yes, games help keep my mind and my reflexes going in spite of me being an old lady. Yeah. All facts. <laughs> See, again, this boils down to, A, our nursing homes are going to be lit, son. <laughs> going to need that Wi-Fi. <laughs> Get Wi-Fi? Jeez, I, I want, dude, I better have like 10 gig to each room. <laughs> You, you, you got you to gotta be careful, though, because if you pull the plug, you might un disconnect a quake, ser quake server or you might just disconnect someone from life support. Well, can you imagine like, you know, you're going to have like what you would consider your typical assisted living, but like somebody's going to have like server racks in there as men like stacked up. Like, you know, there's going to be the network and then like, yeah. then there's going to be the guy making drugs. <laughs> you know, that, that that's a intricate part. Um I, no. I mean, it, it'll, it'll put the kibosh on the fight clubs that plague many nursing homes already, so move it into I, quick. That, that's one way of, like, venting your frustrations without, you know, physical contact, It's I uh, suppose. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, no, I, I think there's something to that, though. I mean, I, it's going to be an interesting study, because we have definitely have people, um, you know, it, it's kind of a given. There's no stigma to um, playing the video games these days, right? So, uh, 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 it depends there, on what kind of media you consume. So there, there was that study recently. Multi, that, uh, Pedro. <laughs> there, there, there was that study recently that was saying that like playing video game or children playing video games doesn't like cause any sort of cognitive decline, but it also doesn't like cause any sort of cognitive increase either. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's just like a lateral thing. Maybe just any sort of brain activity. Oh, I think it's like maintain. It yeah, is, yeah uh, it, it's about yeah. stimulating your hand-eye coordination, figuring out what's happening on screen, what kind of movements you need to do. Mm. It doesn't really make you any better. Shut up. That. Shut up. It no. just yeah, keeps a 360 you as no flexible you MLG or Pro, a <laughs> It might actually help you like uh, figure out new ways of interacting with things, but it's all going to be very specific. Well, here's games. a very easy one to do. Um, <laughs> uh, when, it, when it comes to like playing, uh, let's just say video games, right? So it does that help cognitive activity? Replace uh, video games with chess. Chess, poker, yeah, anything. Not, yeah. Why, why do you think you see old ladies You're only training for the that time? specific kind of scenario. That, Again, then it. you got to battle the vampires while rollerblading. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't that's rollerblade the in a that's nursing only... home. I'll just be like in a wheelchair with like a lance or something. You'll be the tank. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, when it comes to fine motor skills and hand-eye coordination, video games are very good to keep your re reflexes up on those. It's but good, that's and there's it. always the, uh, well, <laughs> use it or lose it. Yeah. You know, you think about that, like, you fall off, and, you know, I one of the reasons I'm a big fan of uh, playing the track medias is because it is a physics platforming, and it forces your brain to preload stuff. You know, you can't immediately react. you got to do, you got to think ahead once you realize, like, what's coming up, what's going on, what's going to be your strategy for this. And there's always new stuff each and every week. You know, there's no mastery of it. Same reason I've always enjoyed, like, bowling or pool. Schnooker. Games like that. You know, it's something that you could never, um, or lawn darts. <laughs> With the actual metal tips, yes. The sharp I, 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 I don't know. There, there, there are some people who are exorbitantly good at, like, snooker. Like, uh, I don't know. I think, I think it, you, could, you could master that game, for sure. But. Uh, what's his name? Uh, O'Sullivan? R R Rooney O'Sullivan? I think sure <laughs> the one that'll just do the perfect game as soon as he gets his hands on the table. <laughs> effectively, the uh, reigning lawn dart chip, and I don't. Well, it's like um, <laughs> it's like alternating <laughs> snooker and lawn darts. It's like chess boxing. I don't know, man. Like, as soon as you bring up lawn darts, uh, Pedro's just like immediately goes to the Irish for some reason. I'm like, what? <laughs> Look, the closest thing I had to lawn darts was one of those uh, vortex throwing things that you threw, and it had the little noisemakers on the side. It went. Remember Xena Warrior Princess? That's that's the only thing that popped into my head. Is her little chakram thing? Did, did you go? <laughs> you <laughs> late? <laughs> yeah. On whatever the hell shell that was, ladies and gentlemen, let's cue the music. We got to bounce out of here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Come watch us live and you'll learn things like, you know, what is, uh, I, I don't know, the seven deadly Santas. 
which we still uh yeah santa monica Can california the, santa the, 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 enti- the entire the city the day when you left yeah. for santa monica <laughs> like yeah the the entirety of santa monica um <laughs> yeah if you want to get a hold of Ben, just at Venstone on Twitter or at Ven on our federated timeline, mass.linuxgamecast.com. Come say hi in Discord, IRC, wherever I may be. Easy to get a hold to. Um, hard to hold on to. I'm not one of the seven deadly Santas, but I'm one of the 12 evil elves. I guess you can find me on Twitter at the Burning Fool, Mastodon at Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com, and Twitch at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I, uh, here I am googling the uh, lyrics for Santa Monica. <laughs> aren't aren't uh, you a racist because... reindeer? <laughs> He's still living with your ghost. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> now, uh, now, now, I was thinking of uh, what if I was actually a ghost? Would I actually know that I was dead? But hey, if the camera is picking up on whatever this is, ghost camera. then I suppose I'm not. Uh, you can find me on uh, Elon Net at unaccounted for that's f-o-u-r uh yeah follow me on there because i'm still waiting for it to burn down but it has not happened <laughs> how about some credits boop gotta give him some credit i mean isn't pac-man already cocaine bear what do you think those dots are made out of i think uh, they're made out of crack no you gotta play uh, the pac-man cocaine bear video game Okay, this is a thing that I've learned about. We gotta thank our advisors, Omegas and Arthur, and we gotta thank our executive producers coming up on screen. It's Barb Ramp, Scott Mashota, Tom McCass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, George Pebble, Tomash, Unoid, and Hakim. And our Chicago kicks ass here with Super Death Stoat, keeping it real. Oh, yeah. I, I'm playing the Cocaine Bear video game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to thank the Sea Monsters, sea monsters for no. Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Versenu, the Justin Frostclaw, Nubin, Darkwing, System T, Dancing Joe, Ogi One, and Kyrolo. Yes. Plenty of death notes. Uh, Dodger, Xanthus Gaming, Rue, Fox is fine. All of hope. Doom 2.1. Renee. The other Steven and Steve. Jesus. <laughs> Turn the Ranger. Gronk the Lanta. Turn over. Foxy. Mr. Alert. All of hope. Jalo. Mia, Daniel L. Vastrats, Rohan, broke. Rohan joined us for like uh, the last fifteen minutes of Borderlands. Man, he showed up. <laughs> okay, see, I was confused about that. Thank you to all the fine upstanding cannibals on the fuck wall. Uh, Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Lennox, New, Alias, Noctilus, Jontilus, Eshepilus, Gametronidus, and Unodilus, and DS, and Jolus, and Aromic Development, and yes, and yeah. yes. By our powers combined, we are. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Cocaine bear. All right. <laughs> Down for everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Five dudes.